Welcome back! As promised, I will cover the smartwatch widget system in this video. It's a very integral part of the smartwatch's functionalities and deserves a separate video, so we can go a bit into detail. By the way, if you have not watched the smartwatch setup video yet, I would recommend you to do so first. I will treat everything it covers as known from here on. You find the link in the description. Let me start by taking apart the example that comes with the smartwatch utility a bit. And just as a reminder, the smartwatch utility cannot function without a copy of the Advanced Framework Core 4.1 or higher. Now let's have a look at the scheme here. The smartwatch comes with an initial widget that should not be changed. It mainly contains a widget switcher which comes with the Advanced Framework. In the smartwatch utility example, the widget switcher, which comes in the widget initial, is in directed to show the main widget which contains three buttons upon the start of the level. Each of these buttons activates an event that sets the corresponding feature widget. Each feature widget in turn contains a close button up here, which instructs the widget initial to show the main widget again. So in summary, the widget system looks like this. And it works well as long as you have only a few feature widgets. So what could you do when you have too many feature widgets? Well, you could start to create several menu, menu widgets and create a system like this. But I also had another idea which looked, would look something like this in a scheme, where each widget contains two buttons which indicate the next and previous widget in a cycle. And that's what I'm going to set up in this video with a few of the example widgets and a completely new feature widget. This new widget basically is a time fuse which you can use to let this bomb explode after a given time. As you might expect, this needs some planning. Let me go over that shortly. The widget is supposed to look somewhat like this. The top part is reserved for the title and change widget buttons, which are necessary for our widget system. On the lower left, you can set the time and upon the start and upon pressing the start button, the countdown is started. The rest of the functions we will put on the smartwatch motion component using the widget functionality event dispatcher, which is more clean for replication reasons. The motion component we use here is a copy of the MCOM smartwatch example, which already contains all the code we need for the example widgets to function. It finds the actor in question by tag and starts the countdown upon it. Finally, we have the bump actor, which is a modified copy of the BP trigger example from the advanced framework core. Here we already had the code for the explosion, so I only needed to add the countdown and modify the code marginally. Now that we are ready, let's get started with the widget system. I want four widgets to make my concept clear. Three of them I will copy from example widgets from the smartwatch utility. I will make a copy of those three widgets here. So I have them ready for modification. The fourth widget is going to be the time fuse and I will create that from scratch and take you with me through every step. Just let me show you once on this copy of the controls widget, how I prepare every example widget for use in my widget system. First, I went to the graph and removed this event. It belongs to this back to main button, which I will also delete. Now I'm going to include these two arrow buttons and call them arrow next and arrow previous. And that's it for now. Let's get started with the custom widget next. First, we need to create the widget and make it a child of the widget based. Next, I will adjust the size of the widget to the smartwatch size, which is 1000 to 500. Like this, we can be sure that every button and so on is clearly visible on the smartwatch. Next, we add some buttons, text field, and put them neatly in horizontal and vertical boxes.
Let me go over the finished widget for clarity. The arrow button next to the title up here are supposed to bring us to the next and previous widget. The text here is supposed to display the tag of the bomb actor, so we can single out one actor if we want to. Here at the left we have the timer. The timer is saved as an integer which you can manipulate using the arrow buttons. Lastly, we have the start button here which is of the type widget display button normal, which is supposed to start the timer. Now let's go over the code. I already set up the timer, since it's very straightforward. The time variable is set to zero upon the creation of the widget. Up here, uh, the right arrow button adds one to the time variable, the left arrow button subtracts one, and the clamp keeps the possible time between zero and 10 seconds. Next, set up the start button. Here we mainly call the execute widget functionality event on the motion component and transmit the time, tag and command. Which is actually a bit tricky since the function gives us only limited possibilities for variable transmission. Finally, I settled for this constellation using the source identifier name slot for the tag and the option string slot for the time variable. And as command, I entered countdown. Now let's set up the rest of the time fuse first. On the motion component here, which is a copy of the MCOM smartwatch example, we already call the widget functionality event and connect it to this switch on name node. And the name in question is the command we transmitted from the widget. Like this, you can consolidate all widget functions here. To implement our own function, we only need to add a node here and enter the command we defined in the widget. Next, we use the tag we transmitted here to get the actors we want using get all actors with tag. This function returns an array. Now we need to cast each element of that array to the modified trigger example actor and call the start countdown function and transmit the time variable. With that, we are done on the smartwatch motion component. The rest we can handle on the actor. As I mentioned before, this is a modified copy of the trigger example actor from the advanced framework core. What I did here is not an integral part of this tutorial, so let me just go over it very shortly. First, I added a text render to display the countdown and this integer variable. Next, I created the start countdown custom event, which sets the text render accordingly and starts this timer, which calls the countdown main event over here every second. This event basically does what a countdown is supposed to do. It reduces the time variable by one, sets the new value in the text render, and upon reaching zero, calls the explosion event. The explosion is encapsulated in this component triggered event from the trigger component on the actor. I left it almost completely as it was and only added this destroy actor node over here. Let's get back to the widget system. You might remember that I did not assign any logic to the next and previous widget arrow buttons yet. Let's go back to the widget graph and finish that. First we add a button pressed event for each button. From there, we get the initial widget, which contains the widget smisher, as you might recall. Next, we cast to the widget smartwatch initial. Get the widget switcher. and set the new widget with which according to our planned cycle is the controls widget. Now re repeat this process for the other button and the other widgets.
And let's not forget to make sure that all our buttons are entered in the get button containable widgets function in each widget. In case of the new widget, this means we have to create an override. This is for the recursive widget interaction feature of the advanced framework. If you use traditional widget interaction, you can skip this step. And while we are at it, we can go over the code again. Up here, we set the start content uh, upon creation of the widget, which most especially is the zero value zero for the time variable. The code here handles the setting of the countdown time using the uh, arrow buttons. Here we start the countdown. And finally, down here, we assign the next and previous widget in the circular widget system that we have built up. Let's add shortly back to the motion component. Here we add one of the new widgets on the widget component as starting widget and check everything on the motion controller and pawn. If you are at a loss right now, please have a look at the video in the description where we explain how to set up the smartwatch. I also want to point out that for this video as well as the setup video, I used a child of the smartwatch motion controller, uh, which comes with the smartwatch utility. And I would recommend you to do the same if you want to follow the video. Finally, we must not forget to enter the tag we defined on the widget on one of our bomb actors here in the level. Now, here we have our smartwatch with the new widget system. As planned, we can skip through the four widgets we included by using the arrow buttons. The example widgets still work as before, so let's try out the new widget. First, we set a time of five seconds, let's say. Now press the start button. The countdown is displayed atop the bomb we equipped this attack. And upon zero, it explodes, as planned. The other one, however, stays because it does not have the attack required and is therefore not found by the motion component. Now you should have all the important tools to work with the smartwatch utility. And I sincerely hope you can put it to good use in your project. For now, bye-bye.